When you think about monkeys, Europe isn't the first place that comes to mind. The continent is known for wolves, bears, deer, and birds of prey, but primates, not at all. That absence feels odd once you notice it, because monkeys live in so many other parts of the world. They climb through the jungles of South America, crowd the temples of Asia, and swing through Africa's forests. Yet here, there aren't any. I've always found that a little strange. Europe has such a wide mix of landscapes and animals, you'd think at least one kind of monkey would have made it here and stayed. But the truth is, the continent did have primates long ago. Millions of years back, they were part of Europe's forests. At some point, though, they disappeared and they never came back. So what happened? Why is Europe the one place where monkeys never returned? To answer that, we have to go back to a very different version of the continent. 10 or 15 million years ago, Europe wasn't the land of cold winters and mixed forests we know today. It was warmer, wetter, and thick with trees. In that world, monkeys and apes didn't just survive here, they thrived. One of the best-known examples is Mesopithecus, a small monkey that lived about 7 million years ago. Fossils of this small, long-limbed monkey show up from Greece to Hungary. It wasn't exotic. It looked and behaved much like the monkeys of Asia today feeding on fruits and leaves, climbing when it could, and walking when it had to. Europe also had apes. Dryopithecus lived in what's now France and Spain, moving through fruit-rich forests much like chimps do. Then there's Pierolopithecus from Catalonia, another sign that apes had a real presence here. So why did they vanish? The simple answer is climate. As the Miocene came to an end, Europe caught. Forests that once stretched across the land started breaking apart, replaced by patchier woodlands and grasslands. For primates that depended on steady fruit and thick canopy cover, that change was catastrophic. Habitats fragmented, food became seasonal, and slowly one species after another disappeared. By about 7 million years ago, Europe's primates were gone. Even if monkeys had the chance to come back, Europe isn't exactly friendly territory for them anymore. The problem isn't just that it gets cold, it's how seasonal the continent is. Most monkeys are built for places where food is always available. In the tropics, something is in season year-round. Fruits, leaves, flowers, insects. There's always something to eat. Europe doesn't work like that. Here, winters strip the trees bare, fruits vanish, and the landscape goes quiet for months. For an animal that depends on a steady supply of fresh food, that's a deal-breaker. Think about it this way. Deer can tough it out by browsing twigs and bark. Wild boar dig up roots, squirrels hoard nuts, and bears can just sleep through the worst of it. Monkeys don't have those tricks. They can't hibernate, they don't store food, and their bodies aren't built for scraping by on tough winter forage. Even southern Europe, with its milder climate, has long stretches where the land doesn't provide what monkeys need. Summers are hot and dry, winters are chilly and unpredictable, and the reliable year-round buffet of fruit simply isn't there. That seasonal rhythm shapes everything about Europe's ecosystems, and it's one of the main reasons monkeys never found their way back. Even if Europe still had the right habitats, monkeys would have a hard time ever making it back. The geography just doesn't give them an easy way in. South of Europe lies the Sahara, and for primates, that's about as hostile as it gets. It's not only heat, it's the sheer lack of trees, shade, and reliable water. Monkeys can travel through open areas if there are patches of forest or woodland to move between, but the Sahara is thousands of kilometers, with nothing to break it up. A troop can't carry food or water for weeks, and they can't survive by scraping a living from sand. Once the desert reached its modern size, it became a wall monkeys could never cross. The other route would be across the Mediterranean, and millions of years ago, that wasn't as impossible as it sounds. During the Mycenaean salinity crisis, about 6 million years ago, the sea level dropped so low that land bridges and wide salt plains appeared. That's likely when some primates managed to reach Europe in the first place. But when the Mediterranean filled up again, the path was cut off permanently. From then on, there was no natural corridor for monkeys to follow. That isolation is why Europe never got its monkeys back. They weren't driven out everywhere. They carried on just fine in Africa and Asia. But once Europe's own populations were gone, there was no way for new ones to arrive. 
The barriers were too wide, too harsh, and too permanent. Even if those barriers didn't exist, monkeys would have faced another problem once they got here. Everything they might need was already being used. Food would always be the breaking point. In Europe, fruits and nuts come in short bursts and then vanish for months. A monkey troop arriving in late summer might do well for a while, gorging on figs, chestnuts, or acorns. But by December, the shelves would be empty. In Africa or Asia, they can always move to another fruiting tree. But in Europe, there is no endless cycle of trees ripening one after another. Winter cuts everything off. And when those resources do appear, they're contested. Wild boar are everywhere, and they'll eat almost anything. They dig under the soil for roots and tubers, strip orchards, raid fields, and bulldoze their way through berry patches. They're also aggressive. A troop of monkeys wouldn't scare them off. Deer are another competitor, pulling down leaves, buds, and bark, especially when food is scarce. Even the smaller players matter. Squirrels and dormice pack away acorns and seeds before monkeys could get to them. It's not just about what's available, it's about who gets there first. And in Europe, the resident species have already perfected that timing. Predators add a constant risk. Wolves are the most obvious threat. They can travel long distances, surround prey, and wear it down. A group of monkeys moving on the ground, and they'd have to because Europe doesn't have endless continuous canopy, would be at serious risk. Lynx, though solitary, are stealth hunters. They wait for the right moment, pouncing on animals that never even know they're being watched. A distracted monkey on the edge of a group would be an easy target. Then there are the golden eagles. In mountainous parts of Spain, the Alps, or the Balkans, they could take juveniles straight out of the trees. Even smaller raptors would keep the pressure high. And while bears don't specialize in hunting primates, they're opportunistic. A young monkey in the wrong place could end up on the menu. If you try to map out where monkeys might hold on, southern Europe stands out. The oak forests in Spain, the olive groves and scrublands of Greece, or river valleys in Italy. These places are warmer, with shorter winters and some evergreen vegetation. But they come with their own problems. Summers can be brutally dry, so food disappears at the other end of the year too. Mediterranean oaks produce acorns, those vanish quickly to boar and deer. Figs and olives are seasonal bursts, not a steady supply. Even in the best case, monkeys here would always be on the edge, full bellies for a few months, hunger the rest of the time. Further north, survival would be even harder. Central European forests lose almost everything in winter. By November, leaves are gone, fruit is gone, insects are scarce. Snow covers the ground, and the only animals that cope are the ones adapted to scraping through bark, digging under frozen soil, or hibernating. Monkeys don't have those tools. Even if they tried, they'd be losing weight fast, just waiting for spring. The only real seasonal workaround would be raiding humans. Crops, orchards, vineyards. All of it would be tempting. And that brings another layer of conflict. Because animals that consistently raid food from people rarely survive long in Europe's landscapes. If there's one spot in Europe where you can see monkeys today, it's Gibraltar. At the very southern edge of Spain, on that rocky peninsula that juts into the sea, lives a colony of Barbary macaques. They're hard to miss, scrambling up the cliffs, jumping on cars, or pulling snacks out of tourists' backpacks. For many visitors, they feel completely out of place, almost like someone pasted a bit of North Africa onto Europe. The truth is, that's not far off. These macaques aren't truly native to Europe. Their natural range is across the Mediterranean in Morocco and Algeria. At some point, people must have brought them here. Nobody's exactly sure when. Some blame the Moors during their centuries of rule in Spain. Others say the Romans might have done it even earlier. And there are legends that link them to even older times. But what is clear is that they didn't just wander into Gibraltar on their own. What makes them even more unusual is how much help they get to survive. They live in a Mediterranean climate that suits them fairly well, but food can run short. That's where people step in. The macaques are fed regularly to keep their numbers stable. Without that, there's a real chance the colony would shrink or disappear. Instead, they've become a symbol of Gibraltar, woven into its identity, almost like mascots. It's an odd arrangement. 
You've got wild monkeys, but they're also carefully managed and heavily dependent on people. They're Europe's only free-living monkeys, yet they don't really represent what European wildlife is. They're more like a reminder of another world, clinging to a rocky outpost just across the sea from their true home. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.